Hello, everyone. My name is Robert. Um, I am one of the engineers here at Pivotal Labs. Um, I'm here with, you have Ria here, Nader, Peter, and Dylan. Um, and the five of us, uh, we're going to give you guys a presentation on um, sort of our struggles around the continuous integration, continuous delivery, and how we sort of overcame a lot of the hurdles that we encountered. Um, a little bit of an introduction about Pivotal Labs. Um, our company's approach to building software, uh, we go down the agile iteration approach. Uh, some of our core values include pair programming, um, as well as continuous integration delivery, um, as well as test-driven development. So because continuous integration and continuous delivery is important to us, we try to enable our clients and our customers to be able to sort of incorporate that process into their process. Because our mission is to really um, change the way that you guys build software. Right. So um, how does it work in Pivotal Labs? So this lovely guy here, he's actually what we like to call the product owner. Um, during the lab's process, the product owner will actually use Pivotal Tracker to create user stories. Um, these user stories are features that the developers will implement. Um, and as you do the pair programming, um, we actually implement these features. Um, and then we mark these stories as either finished or accepted. Um, then we can go on to the issues I encountered with Rio. All right, so I'm going to talk briefly about the issue that we encountered that actually caused us to build this app. Um, so this is a little bit about our process. We will start by pushing a commit to GitHub once we have a user story. And um, our deployment process works differently in dev than it does in higher environments. So let's go through how it works in dev first. We will push up a commit. And then it will go to Concourse, and it'll automatically get deployed to PCF on our dev environment. There's a Concourse talk after this one, I think, in the room behind us. So if you guys want to learn more about Concourse, you should go to that one. Um, and our process for deploying to QA, staging, and production is different because the client actually owns those deployments. Uh, so we don't have control over them. And because it's a manual process, so it looks more like this, um, we don't have visibility into it, so we don't know when something is getting deployed um, or what exactly has been deployed, if all the features are there or if they aren't. And that's not only a problem for us, it's also a problem for the mobile team because they want to know if they can integrate with uh, some of the new features that we just pushed up, and we can't actually tell them if they are in the QA environment or not because we don't know. Um, so this causes a problem like this. We deploy something, and we think that dev and QA are going to be in sync, but it ends up looking more like that. Um, so we decided to come up with a product or a small app that would be able to combine GitHub uh, commits and tracker status and tell us what is in every environment. And we called that Convoy, and that is its lovely logo. Um, and kind of what it does is it gives us visibility into what has been deployed in every environment. So since we have multiple apps and multiple stories, multiple Git repos, um, we want to know which one is at which stage and in which environment. And we want to be able to give that visibility to uh, the people that are going to be consuming our services and also to the QA engineers so that they can test. Uh, so I think now Dylan and Peter are going to give a demo of the app that we built. So I'll hand it over to them. Thanks, Ria. Yeah, so Convoy. Uh, we'll give you a quick demo here. So we'll, we're actually going to take you through very quickly the entire uh, process that these guys have described for you. So um, Peter's going to be doing our demo. But as a product owner, we're going to, in the role of the product owner, we're going to create a new user story. 
we're going to implement that and uh, see it all the way through to um, our deployed environments. So we've got our faster than light drive project. It's a little ambitious, I know. Um, yes, that is a good name for a user story. Quantum thrusters to support thrust vectoring. You're definitely going to need that on your faster than light drive. So of course we're using Pivotal Tracker here, but you know this could just as easily be. I don't know what you're telling me. <laughs> move over. Just if you move away from one of the monitors. Oh, okay. I can bring this with me. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so this just could just as easily be uh, Jira or any other um, story tracking system you might be using. So we've got a, uh, a new user story here, so we can um, mark it as st started and begin implementing it. So we're going to mark it as one point. Quantum thrusters to support thrust vectoring is not a particularly complex story to implement. So, um, so now we're going to head over to the uh, GitHub Web API, our IDE of choice for this demo, and do a quick implementation for this story. Excellent. So we've got, this is our quantum entanglement service, which is going to support our thrust vectoring. And now, of course, we want to remember to uh, key to our integration with our, uh, between GitHub and the story tracking, we want to make sure we put our story ID into our commit message, something I'm sure most of you are used to doing as well. Great, so now we've got a commit and we can uh, go back to tracker and, um, and mark this story as finished. So um, we should be able to refresh the convoy page here and sure enough there's our new commit. So here's convoy, this is our first glimpse at it. Um, essentially, we've got uh, each row that you're seeing on the screen here. First of all, we've got uh, services on, that we're tracking in Convoy on the left-hand side, so our quantum entanglement service that we've just in implemented a user story on. You can see is the first item in the list that's selected there. Getting a little feedback. Um, so each uh, row that you see on the screen is a git commit. Um, and you can see that there's a column here. I don't know if I'm standing in anyone's way. Um, listing the story ID, and then you've got the git commit ID on the right. Um, so you can see that uh, some of, most of our rows here are marked as green. That means um, the stories that those commits are associated with are already accepted, but our newest one um, has just been marked as finished and hasn't been accepted by the product owner yet, so it's still gray. So at this point, I think we want to... Um, so at this point, Concourse would be, or any, whatever your uh, continuous integration tool happens to be, would be picking up your commit and um, deploying it to automatically to dev for you. So we're just going to simulate that by doing a quick build and CF push. So of course, the build is going to be running all our automated tests. would have been part of the implementation that we added. I noticed Peter added a tested line. It's prudent. And there's a CF push, so that's um, pushing that uh, latest jar that we just built. It's being a Spring Boot app um, up to Cloud Foundry. So what we're going to see here in a moment is that um, Convoy is going to pretty quickly notice that we've got a new version in our dev environment, and it's going to let us know which version that is that's deployed there at a glance. Yeah. 
Hey, John. How, how will Convoy know which version is deployed? Ah, excellent. Sure thing, yeah. Uh, so the question was, um, how will Convoy know what, what version is deployed in a given environment? So that's a great question. Um, so we have uh, actually leveraged a uh, Spring Boot feature um, that's really easy to implement. Um, so Spring Actuator uh, is a library that you can include um, with your Spring Boot project that uh, exposes a bunch of um, uh, application health type of endpoints. Um, the one in particular that we're interested in here is called, it's called the info endpoint. Um, and so with a, uh, um, a plug-in to your build tool, either Gradle or Maven in this case, um, you can uh, have the git commit hash included on that info endpoint. So you, you can hit your endpoint, at your, your app at any time, and it will tell you um, what the latest commit was, that uh, basically what the version that you're running is. Um, so thanks for that question. That's good. That's that's really uh, relevant. So um, so yeah, as you, you can see here, Convoy has noticed our new deployment and has marked this latest commit as uh, as the version that's running currently running in dev. Um, so that is actually a big part. That right there is it has fulfilled a big part of why we built Convoy. Um, so the next the the next feature really is that um, okay, we know what's running in each environment. But, and we're very confident in deploying to dev every commit that, uh, um, that goes in. We're just going to deploy it to dev because dev is going to be, you know, the least stable environment. But um, in our case, our, our uh, customer is controlling all environments past dev, including QA. So um, they want to know, you know, what's the, what's the latest version of the app that we can deploy to a given environment, let's say QA, um, that... Uh, only includes accepted, accepted work, work that's already been accepted by the product owner. Um, so yeah, so we have this get recommended version guy up at the top, and gorgeous UX, as you can see, um, shows us that this is the latest commit that contains, the latest version of the app that contains nothing but accepted work. So our latest commit does not count there. It is not that story has not been accepted yet by the product owner, so it's not going to be recommended for deployment to um, an an upper environment. So um, that said, we can now go to Pivotal Tracker and mark our story as delivered and accepted. So product owner says is going to do whatever they need to do. In our case, you know their QA is actually writing automated acceptance tests that are going to run against their uh, environments. And so now you can see just, it's a little subtle, but on the left there, the, uh, the row marker there is turned green. And, um, and so now we can ask for a uh, recommendation for QA. And it's going to say, oh, look, you know, we're all set to deploy this latest version to QA. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's pretty much what we've got for, uh, for Convoy. So I'm passing it off to Nader to Give us a little perspective on the uh, customer side, I think. So the project where we're building this for, uh, without getting into too much details about the client and stuff, it's we have 12 mi different microservices. Each one of them is a Spring Boot app deployed independently. And there's two instances of Cloud Foundry, one in the east and one in the west. And each one of them would have dev, QA, staging, uh, UET, and then prod, so five times two. So it's really hard to manage all the different all the different uh, applications, where they're deployed and what's where. So what we've seen as feedback after deploying this from the actual uh, people on the client side, this makes them very happy because this actually tells them, for example, prod is behind QA by that many commits. These are the things that happened in these different versions. So they can easily, with a glance, see how, what's deployed in each environment. 
uh, that was like the main thing for them to see what's the in each environment and uh, how one uh, prod or higher environment is behind dev and QA. So once they test QA, they're comfortable with it. The, the recommended service is actually an endpoint in this tool that their deployment scripts would go and call that one and get the recommended version, for example, for staging, and then deploy that automatically. So that way, as soon as the product owner accepts something in Pivotal Tracker, it automatically gets deployed into higher environments without anybody having to do anything, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other benefit is it helps the product owner when he's looking, because he's managing like 12 different services, to know, but by looking at one service, he knows this one has, uh, I need this to go through because it's an important fix, so he can go through it and see which stories are still not accepted for me to go up to that point, and he can, it kind of ma makes going through the acceptance a little bit more easier and manageable from a product owner perspective, because he can see uh, what he needs to do in which services and what stories to just from here go to tracker. Uh, these two, these two, like the, each line in the tool links to GitHub and tracker, so he can just go from here to tracker, look at the story, do his verification and accept it, and then it will move up. Uh, the other big benefit, which we kind of didn't show here, is that uh, there's an also an endpoint as part of the continuous uh, automation that the client is doing, that if you give it two different versions will go and give you the release notes of that by reading all the different commits and then all the tracker stories and getting a description of the stories and giving that back as either an HTML or text file that they can put in an, in an email and send out to the stakeholders. So the release notes is, if you, take, if you, notice, if you already know that and are, while you're building the stories, take that into account, it's 100% automated and nobody has to do anything. Uh, and this is pretty much like the, the main uh, areas that it helped improve uh, from the feedback we got from the client. I think that's all the slides we have. We wanted to have kind of an open discussion about if anybody has questions or to any of us. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, right. So um, a couple of questions there. So firstly, is, is actually we use uh, Urban Code Deploy. Uh, how do you compare the Convoy with the Urban Code Deploy? in terms of the feature, in terms of capabilities? So the question was, how do you compare Urban, urban Code Deploy with Convoy? I don't know Urban Code Deploy. I can feel that one knows a little bit about it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so um, I think, uh, so Urban Code Deploy is something um, that is uh, handling the deployment itself. Um, and I think, uh, I think Convoy is slightly, is. We're good. <laughs> I, I don't want to kill all the time, but I do have another question. Go for it. Okay. All right, sorry. Thank you, guys. Um, so uh, another thing is, is about, because it's a, to us, it's a deployment, it, it's a process. It, it's not just a, you know what, where do we have, right? This is kind of a, 
you need to have approval, you need to have the right people to do the right thing, you know, leaving a large organization, that's kind of the life we leave. So with the Come Boys, how, how do we define that process? Or is that, is that possible? Do you want to that? Uh, sure. Yeah. So, sorry, I'm just going to go back a few more slides here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. So, I think what you're really describing here is is what the sort of the root of the problem that we sort of had. We are working with a client that does have an embedded process in place. Um, a lot of these actually come from the waterfall days, where we have you know teams that are very dedicated to QA deployment, dedicated to staging deployment, UAT deployment. Is there anyone here who actually still has that in the organization? I'm seeing some some head nods, right? And there's probably a lot of you guys who actually are part of these teams as well. Um, so Convoy itself was a very informative tool. Um, it gave our product owner as well as executive stakeholders the ability to determine, you know, what is something that would be good to deploy, right? I mean, they still have to go through a lot of their acceptances, um, some of their manual testing. But again, we are trying to push towards a more agile approach. So a lot of the TDD that we do in-house, um, Concourse will execute all those tests automatically before it actually approves the build. Um, and we want to be able to give the executive some peace of mind that what we are deploying is acceptable. Does that answer your question? Sort of. Sort of? <laughs> So I think, again, it might be, so we, we've got kind of a, a, a release and deployment stack here that we've sort of, and so Convoy is the one that we're focusing on a little bit, but really um, maybe the steps that you're, that you're thinking of here when it comes to acceptance and that sort of thing um, is, is something that we're covering, in our process we're covering as part of the pivotal tracker uh, portion of the, of the process. So when we saw the product owner go in and mark the story as accepted, um, and Convoy, you know, is, is going to wait for that acceptance before it recommends uh, deploying a given version. Um, you know, it's that acceptance step uh, that I think that I think you're you're touching on. Um, you know, we, we have an approach where uh, the stories, the units of work that we're working on, are intentionally very small. We keep them pretty fine grained um, so that they can they can be accepted quickly. Um, and uh, and you know, it's it's kind of an approach of you know if it's if it's painful, do it more often. Um, so. You know, we were shooting for, and and we're n we're not there yet either. Um, you know, a, a process where work can be delivered um, continuously, um, and really like down to like the day to day, hour to hour level. Um, so you know, when you're if you're working in a, already in a process where it takes months to get a release built and approved, you know, you you have to take steps. It's you have to take small steps to get closer to. Um, the, the continuous model, and that's that's something that I think we've all experienced. So if you're working on a service, let's say it makes it some out of QA, you want to release something, but then the QA folks say that service isn't good, how do you get that out? Would you go to Pivotal Tracker and say it's not accepted, and then? Yeah, great question, yeah. Yeah, there's, an ex there's a rejected state essentially in, and it's similar to there would be in, in, in another uh, story tracking systems, but yes, once it's marked as rejected, um, Co Convoy would, would notice that, and actually the little green bar would turn into a little red bar, and uh, it would no longer be recommending that. And in, and in fact, it would not recommend any versions, any subsequent versions that contain that rejected story until um, that story is, is fixed and, be, and becomes accepted. Any other questions? Maybe just another one. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned about automation, right? So where where does the automation happen? Like for example, when you because when I see the demo here is that we you know we, we create a story, but we still here you know, still need to type in the say push all that stuff, uh, put down the code and push to the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, cloud foundry, right? But we want to automate the whole thing. Well, Where is that so the step of doing the build and doing the CF push was just to illustrate what happens. But for us, as soon as you push your code into GitHub, uh, which is like 
what normally a developer would do when they feel ready that their code is fine. Concourse, which is our continuous integration system, pulls that code, uh, builds it, builds a jar, runs all the tests, of course, and if all the tests pass, builds a jar, and then deploys to Cloud Foundry, and then uh, actually runs more tests and so on. So, on. so that's all happening autom automated in Concourse. Some of the higher environments that call uh, like the endpoints on the client side are actually using Jenkins, but it's like the same deal. So currently we're using Bamboo, which is another CI server, Bamboo. <coughs> so the challenge we're facing right now is that we put a lot of efforts on Bamboo. We're doing a lot of scripts on Bamboo. Now, there's no way to, co to version control that. Uh, we are actually thinking maybe everything like on Concourse or Jenkins or Bamboo that th those little scripts and configurations on the CI server into GitHub in order to version control to see how and when and who changed it. Uh, I don't know if Concourse has similar uh, support for that to version control the build or deployment. So one of the benefits of Concourse is that you have something called the pup pipeline.yaml, that's pretty much is all your configuration, and it's a YAML file that in our case, we have it in each uh, one of our services in GitHub. So even if you build a whole brand new Concourse server, all you have to do is call one command, uh, Concourse set pipeline, and you give it this YAML file, and it's just there. So that's all kind of handled in, in, in the GitHub or source control. Does that, is that what you mean? Yeah, so that's a benefit of and one of the reasons why we use Concourse and not Jenkins. So another one, so does it hold the artifacts after the build is done? We have an artifactory repository that Concourse, no, Concourse does not, is not able to hold the artifacts or convoy. Concourse just starts a container, runs your build in it, and then destroys the container once it's done, which is, I mean, I don't want to get into too much details about how Concourse works, but, uh, there's an artifactory repository that's kind of sitting there that Concourse can publish the jar to, and that helps actually because then the Jenkins who's pulling this to do uh, deployments into higher environments just pulls the same jar from the same repository and then it's there. So, but how, how could you relate the build uh, with the artifact that they built? So, uh, can you switch? I guess there's a way, sorry, so switch I, back. I don't yeah, I'm going to show you in, in, so our version numbers are based on the git hash. So this way, uh, when you build, based on what you're going to see now, this here is, this commit is part of the version number. And Convoy here tool, when it recommends a version, it can go and it doesn't show it on the UI, but it actually gives you like a complete version number. And then this way, when you call the endpoint, of, of Convoy to say which one to do, should I be deploying. It gives you a version num an exact name and version number of the jar that you can just take and say, there's like a curl command to download from Artifactory, and that's how you get it. Jonathan, ask a question. It's actually not available anywhere. It's part of uh, just, yeah, it's an internal tool. We're just trying to show the concept and how useful it is. It is running on PCF, but yeah. You can, you can come talk to us afterwards and, and we can talk to you really about like uh, what it does, its architecture, and how you guys can put it in your own system. Oh, there's a um, How long did it take to get the proof of concept for something like this working, given that the, all the parts were there, like you have Tracker API, GitHub API, you know what version is running with the actuator? The proof of concept? So we had an, an original version to show the concept that took, I think, like days. But then after that was like working and running for a while, we did this new version, which is like a fancier, nicer looking version, because uh, 
we wanted to make it very configurable with the YAML file that like Dylan explained to uh, able to integrate different other projects other than just our services. So all the mobile app projects for the same client are also showing up on their version of Convoy. Uh, there's other pr projects and other offices also integrated. All they have to do is just put the YAML file in and Convoy kind of has a discovery system of finding that. So this one took a little bit longer, but the original one took like days, not not major amount of time. I would just add one thing to that, and that's that um, where uh, you know it's the web UI is uh, makes a good demo, but um, the one of the uh, crucial pieces of this is that all this information, the re recommended version, um, you know what environment is uh, what versions are deployed in what environment, um, are all exposed as RESTful endpoints. So um, that makes it that makes the the automation, um, you know possible. So the, the UI is nice for the, the, the business users really like the UI, but um, it, exposing it as RESTful services really makes the automation possible. So we have about, there was 10 minutes left, like two minutes ago, so we're almost done. So does anybody have any last questions? <laughs> Go for it. So the Convoy YAML that we have in each service, we have an initial one that we know like at startup of Convoy. Convoy itself has an initial repository that we'll go look at uh, which projects to add there. And then each Convoy YAML that you have can have other projects that would just put a link to a GitHub repo that you can put your files to. So it autom automatically, uh, once it reads like the one startup one, it just can go find any link, anyone that can link to another one, and so on. So then, any, any team who has one project in Convoy could add their other projects. Any number of projects they want. And now, I think we've done something that would make it like refresh that automatically without you having to like restart or anything. All right, um, I think that's it for our presentation. Uh, again, thank you guys very, very much. Uh, we are here available to you guys in the next few minutes if you guys have any further questions for us. Um, if you guys are rather curious about Concourse, there is a presentation on it that is happening next. I actually don't know what room it's, it's gonna be in Young Bloor. So if you guys are interested in Concourse, um, head on over to the Young Bloor room after this presentation. Again, thank you very much. Thank you.